Well, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, it's an intimate group today. So um, hopefully uh, that means that you'll ask us questions. We're here as resources for you. Um, but my name is Gavin. I am a current uh, graduate student in the Masters of Art and Teaching program at, at Hobart and William Smith. Uh, I graduated in May with a double major in political science and educational studies. I was also a French minor and I am currently getting certified to teach uh, social studies uh, to middle and high school students to grade seven through 12. Um, I'm originally from Rochester, New York, uh, about an hour away from Geneva. And on campus, um, as an undergraduate, I was uh, an RA, a resident assistant. I was involved in um, the performing arts in an acapella group, as well as a, a choir, a chorus um, called Chorale on campus and was able to study abroad as a teacher education student. That's a possibility, we'll talk about that. Um, I went in uh, the spring semester of 2019 to France. Um, so I'll turn it over to Sophie who can introduce herself. Yeah, hi everybody. We are very happy that you are here to talk about education and teaching. Um, Bo, my name is Sophie Kaufman and I'm also an art Master of Arts and Teaching student um, at HWS. I am from Ridgefield, Connecticut. Um, and I graduated last year undergrad with um, a BA in educational studies and a BA in dance, uh, theory and performance studies. Um, I would say that I on campus did a lot with um, the dance department uh, extracurricular wise. I was the co-president of the Koshari Dance Collective, which is actually now called the Kinetic Dance Collective um, on campus. And um, I participated in the Arts Experience Festival um, and led a couple workshops over the years. And that's actually um, a festival that celebrates inclusion in the arts. And that is something that Professor um, Mary Kelly, who's here with us today, um, founded 12 years ago. So we'll, we could talk a little more about that if somebody has questions. Um, but I also have been really fortunate to work with um, Mary because in our education department, we just uh, kind of go on a first name basis. So that's just how our intimate department runs. Um, but yeah, I've been able to learn a lot from her uh, about students with disabilities and special ed because um, my teaching certification will be dual in uh, elementary grade one through six and special ed grade one through six. Um, so we're really excited to be here and talking with you today. Um, so I guess to kick off the questions, um, Mary, can you tell us a little bit about your own background and any recent projects that you have been working on? Oh, I, I sure will. Thank you so much, Sophie and Gavin and Kate for hosting us today. And I'm so excited. Uh, events like this just uh, always make me so happy because I love working with people who are interested in being teachers. And I wondered, Sophie, before I answer your question, I, I, I don't want to put anybody on the spot. And so if you don't feel comfortable, that's fine. But I sure would love to meet you. And so if you are uh, feel comfortable uh, sh um, showing yourself on video, that would be great. Uh, and if you would like to say hi, um, I, to make it easier, because it's sometimes hard, I'll just call your name. And if you want to, please say hi. And it would be great to know where you're from, what you're interested in um, in studying. Like if you're interested in being a teacher, is there an area that you'd like to teach? Um, so I'll, I'll start with Megan, because you had, did your video. Um, <laughs> good to meet you. Can you tell uh, us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. I'm from White Plains, New York, which is like 45 minutes outside of the city. And I'm planning on doing elementary ed and definitely getting my master's. Oh, fantastic, Megan, thank you. And Cecilia, the frog person. <laughs> Hi, I would turn my camera on, but I'm currently outside and I think the sun would probably not make everything visible. Um, I'm from Massachusetts and I'm most interested in early childhood education, so like preschool education and stuff. Oh, great, we'll make sure to talk about preschool too. All right, good. Thank you. Yeah, Larissa, hi. Hi, um, I'm from New Jersey. Um, and I'm interested in grades one through six. Oh, wonderful. Thanks for being here. And Nancy. <laughs> hi. I don't oh, know if hi, Nancy. Here. Hi. I'm sitting in for my daughter, Lauren, who is going to be with you in September. 
Um, I'm a teacher myself, so I'm very interested in the program for her. I've been teaching for almost 30 years now, and I'm actually online teaching this year, which is a new experience for an old dog like me. But I'm really interested in your program for my daughter because she has seen me teach for 30 some odd years. So we're from Montreal, Canada. Oh, fantastic. Oh, it's just so wonderful. And, and I really appreciate you all appreciate everyone introducing themselves. Uh, and Nancy, welcome. It's, Thank you. Yeah, good. Uh, all right. So um, my area of focus, I started here 15 years ago, just about, and my area of focus is teacher ed, obviously, and also special education and disability studies. Um, in particular, my area of scholarship focuses on ways that we can use uh, assistive technology and new media as ways to empower folks with disabilities, as a way to have a voice and to uh, be more engaged in inclusive learning environments. I'm originally from Chicago, so maybe I'm the farthest away in this group, uh, but I I love living here in the Finger Lakes. It's certainly my uh, forever home here. Uh, I love living in Geneva. This area is a, a hidden gem in the world and I, I just love it. And especially spring when everything starts popping and the waterfalls start running and the flowers, uh, it's just beautiful here. So um, yes, so that's a, that's a little introduction. Thanks, Sophie. I think Gavin. Um, I'll jump in with the with the next question for for Mary. Um, but before I do that, I just want to uh, make sure that as we go through some of the questions that we have prepared, if you all wouldn't mind just keeping your your mics muted as they are, um, we are recording this just for other folks who weren't able to make it today. Um, but certainly at the end, we'll we'll make sure you all can ask questions either in the chat or um, verbally. So. Um, no fears about that. But um, Mary, uh, if you could touch on some of um, your research and, and your projects and specifically if any students have been involved in, in that um, over the course of your time at, at HWS. Thanks, Gavin. It's actually one of the reasons why I came to HWS. Well, there are two reasons. One, I met these amazing students when I came to my own kind of admissions visit uh, and uh, when I was uh, interviewing here for a job and the students I met, it just sold me here. And, um, and it's one of the reasons why I picked a smaller school, which is that chance to really work with students one on one. Um, I went to large schools, you know, with 45,000 students and I never got to know my professors. I never had advising. I never had those opportunities to really engage in research and uh, uh, you know, community activities with uh, professors. And so I, I really wanted that experience on this end. And I was hoping that I could work with students and, and that has all come to to fruition here. Uh, I certainly have worked with students. We've uh, done uh, work related to areas of my interest around college inclusion and school inclusion, and also about technology. And students and I have, you know, done research projects together, presented at conferences, written articles, all of those kinds of things that students who are interested in doing that can pursue. Students also do independent studies and internships with their faculty members. And we also do, you know, community service activities. Uh, we have days of service where everyone is involved who, who is interested in doing that, who work in the community, faculty, uh, staff, and students together. Um, I would say that there, I mean, there are students who TA classes, they collaborate on research, they do independent studies. Sophie, I know you're doing one with Professor Kaylee this semester. And uh, also students are really involved in like the life of the college too. They're involved with hiring decisions and tenure decisions and all of the things, and even involved in like uh, admissions <laughs> events like today. And so I, I just think because, you know, students are center here. And so to me that that's really uh, something that is so special with, about being in an environment like this. I don't know, Sophie, do you want to talk about your independent study? Would that be a, yeah. a time? Yeah, sure. So I, um, when I was uh, getting my undergraduate degree, I did an independent study as well with Professor Kaylee in the education department. So this is actually my second one this semester. Um, the first one was on um, uh, qualitative research in education because um, coming from a background uh, with not a lot of focus on um, a ton of research. I wanted to like learn more about it and learn more about the processes and um, kind of everything that goes into a good qualitative research. And I love the field of education. So it made a lot of sense for me to do so. Um, so that was 
in an independent study, you kind of select a topic that's really interesting to you. And um, you kind of confer with a faculty member who is um, who agrees to be your supervisor, but also like work with you um, in kind of accomplishing uh, learning a lot more about that topic. So um, Professor Kaylee was he's my advisor. He was my advisor for four years. Um, and he just is somebody who has uh, impacted me a lot on campus. Um, so I did that first independent study with him as a senior. Um, and then now I'm doing one uh, deep dive in elementary mathematics education, uh, because I have learned that I actually love teaching math, even though I never considered myself a mathematical person um, at all. I have learned through like the teacher ed program and a lot of his courses that math is uh, something that I think is really interesting and, and fascinating to teach. There are a lot of possibilities in how to teach math. So it's not so, doesn't feel so rote or procedural and very uh, mundane because it doesn't have to be. So that is what I'm doing now as an independent study, but you work one-on-one -on -one with a faculty member to um, kind of really do a deep dive in a topic you're interested in. And so that in itself is a really great experience to have. Um, you get that, you know, mentorship uh, relationship with um, a faculty member. And um, yeah, it's just been uh, really wonderful to be able to kind of direct myself where I want uh, my attention to be in my own learning. So I've used independent studies to do that. Um, so I guess, Mary, if you're all set with that question, we'll move on to the next. Um, so I guess more broadly thinking about the curriculum of the teacher ed program and the education department, um, how do you think the curriculum helps education students um, reach our like future goals as teachers, um, not as teachers if we're just um, kind of working in the education major. Um, but I know for me, like the field uh, placement experiences that we get right off the bat in the teacher education program, we get to be in a classroom. Those were really helpful and exciting for me. And then also staying on for my master's degree is gonna just help me uh, be you know, the best I can in the classroom. And um, so I don't know, maybe you could touch on ways that the program uh, is structured well. I'm happy to, thanks Sophie. Uh, when I was thinking about curricular goals, uh, I, would, I would say that there's really two main paths that students can go uh, who are interested in the field of education. One path is the teacher ed path, and, and all of you have expressed interest in that in that path. And so I, I want to talk in particular about that. But then there's also a way for students to also study education that's not part of that teacher curriculum. So I'll touch on that as well. But um, for those who are interested in getting their teaching credentials or New York State teaching credentials. We have 15 certification areas here at HWS. Uh, most of you are interested in that elementary uh, area, and so I'll focus on that. But Gavin, unless Nancy, I, I don't know what your daughter is interested in, but uh, Gavin can also share about secondary ed too, if, if there's interest in that. Um, but students do their studies in teacher education in addition to a major and a minor and curricular goals on campus. And I think that that's really important because our model is unique in that, that students can uh, you know, study any other field of interest as well, in addition to being a, a teacher. And I think that that makes for a really well-rounded teacher. Um, actually, that you don't just study in the field of education, you're not just siloed there, but that actually you're part of the entire uh, campus community. And so students, uh, you know, are, like Sophie in dance and uh, Gavin in history, uh, both of them also did a double major in education. So students who are interested in teaching can also study education. You end up taking a lot of courses in that, and that's something that you can do, but you actually don't have to. Uh, and you have to, especially those of you who are doing elementary certification, you need to major in some other field on campus. And so you know, we have a lot of students who are interested in psychology, dance, uh, sociology, uh, uh, studying a language, uh, st studying other fields. And so students do that and also do their teaching credentials. Um, you start your sophomore year, which means you have lots of experience to teach. 
And I think that that's a hallmark of our program is the wealth of experience, the breadth of teaching experiences. By the time you're done, 650 hours or more of teaching, of authentic classroom teaching experience. Um, and students are able to uh, even teach potentially abroad. Gavin can talk about that later when we talk about study abroad, but students could even do a teaching placement if they're interested in traveling somewhere else and there's a place to do it there. Um, but students from their sophomore year are teaching in schools. We believe firmly that you need that both that praxis and that practice or that, sorry, the, the theory and the prax, practice, uh, that praxis, right? That, that intersection of theory and practice. And I think by starting teaching, and then complementing that where you learn about lesson planning and you learn about what does it mean to be a teacher and you learn about some of the, the nuances behind the scenes, but then you're also working with teachers where you're learning how to implement that piece behind the scenes. And so I, I would, I mean, our students are so ready for teaching by the time you're done student teaching and Sophie and Gavin can attest to that. They have had so much experience and they are very competitive on the market. Uh, our students who are interested in teaching jobs they get jobs. Uh, many of our students were offered jobs uh, even at, during student teaching in the fall and uh, uh, are able to certainly teach in the profession. As Nancy probably knows all too well, it's a profession right now that uh, many have left the field and that's hard. Um, uh, it was a difficult year during the pandemic and I think that we can't uh, you know, not talk about the challenges that were in, in education during the pandemic, but I also know and have seen just the, the, the resilience and the strength of students and teachers and those working in education to really um, figure this out and, and do their best to make sure that kids are still receiving an education and are still able to grow and thrive and learn what they need to learn. It's been hard. Um, and our students have learned a lot. I would say the students who are learning how to teach during a pandemic, um, you all are so ready for anything. You've taught in person, you've taught online, you know, you've done mixtures of that and, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you just learn a lot. And so I, I anticipate, uh, you know, we are working with our local schools. We work with seven school districts and all of them are, are um, working with us to place students. So I am com confident as much as I can be that uh, teaching placements uh, will be available in the fall um, for our students. And um, yeah, it, it's a challenging time, but it's also a really important time to become teachers. And so I, I'm really excited that all of you are interested in that. I will also say you can get your certification as an undergrad uh, and, and about half of our students do that. So the program works so that you can finish it within four years and, and graduate as a senior with your teacher certification and be recommended for certification in New York State. We also have a competitive smaller master's program that's just for our teacher ed students. And that's something that students apply to junior year so that you can be planful about your senior year and and that's something that is also available for our teacher ed students um, and so uh, Sophie and Gavin um, can both speak about um, either the master's program because it sounded like some students were interested in that or, and or how um, the program helps you meet your career goals. The other path, and I remember I said two paths, so the other path is the education major. And so if you decide you don't wanna work on teaching credentials, because sometimes you get out there and it's it's not what you thought it was, and you say, well, I love education and I wanna work with kids, but maybe I wanna be a social worker or a counselor, or I wanna work with kids in a more individualized ways. Then you could do an education major or a minor and still study the field, but not do all the work of the credential of not of the teacher license. Um, so, uh, Sophie or Gavin, would you like to comment a little bit about kind of curricular goals and or? Yeah, program? maybe I'll let Sophie talk about the, the master's program um, if folks are interested in that. I'll just say that um, despite hybrid learning, virtual learning, um, many of us in our cohort uh, in the fall were in person, um, you know, up to our comfortability. Um, I taught in a, a hybrid model. Um, I was there every day. Students were there four out of the five days of the week in two separate cohorts. Um, so certainly really different and not what I expected, um, but I remain grateful every day compared to folks that I know that taught virtually in the fall. Um, 
that I was able to be there every day and, and have as normal an experience as I could. Um, and like Mary mentioned, we have classroom experience starting sophomore fall. And so um, we should mention you don't have to declare you don't have to declare a major at HWS until the end of your sophomore year. So entering the teacher education program, you do enter it a bit early, um, but it really gives you that, that experience of going into a classroom as a sophomore and saying, yes, this is exactly what I wanna do. Or it's early enough where you can say, never mind, maybe I'm gonna take the educational studies route and that's more for me. Um, I entered college thinking I wanted to be a doctor. Um, like so many people, I watched way too much Grey's Anatomy in high school and found um, that that wasn't for me. And that's college for a lot of students that go to a liberal arts college. Um, and so I think the program really builds on the 18 year old brain that is like all over the place and doesn't quite know what it wants to do. But for those that come in really wanting to be a teacher, um, it really hones in on, on that excitement. Yeah, I will add to that. Um, I mean, I'll talk about the master's program in a second, but um, for it's, I came into college knowing that I wanted to dance still because I danced my whole life. And I also knew that I loved children and um, working with children with disabilities. And so I was like, oh, they, no, the education department, I should try some classes and, and maybe do the TEP, the teacher ed program. And so I went to an information session and um, I, Honestly, I think I made like the absolute best decision, decision for myself um, becoming a teacher and, and going through the program because it gives you so much. The field experiences are really special because not every teacher education program has you out in the field that early. Um, and so it was it's exciting when you get you know, your very first placement and you go and you go into a school and the, the, your students look at you as a teacher from day one. And so again, I will uh, reiterate exactly what Gavin said is, you know, you'll know if that is, is the path that you wanna take, but the educational studies major is excellent in that you can take so many different kinds of courses um, about metacognition, disability studies, um, storytelling, and you know, language acquisition, all these different pieces of education that don't necessarily have to apply to a, an intimate classroom setting, um, that you can become, um, yeah, go into being a social worker, that you can take all this knowledge outside of the department. And that's a really uh, important thing to keep in mind. Um, so in terms of the master's program, it's designed, it's one year and um, it's, it's a fifth year. At, you, you add it, you tack it on to the end of your undergraduate experience. Um, and during the fall, you do full-time student teaching. So Gavin explained his. Um, my certification is dual. So um, as I said, uh, elementary grade one through six and special ed one through six. And so I did a general education classroom for the first uh, eight weeks um, and I was with first grade and went into student teaching requesting fourth, fifth or sixth grade um, and ended up student teaching with first. And that is now where I feel that I found my, like I grounded myself in, you know, being with first grade, second grade, maybe even kindergarten. So that's, um, you know, another exciting piece for me. But so I did first grade and then I went um, for the second half of my special education placement, I was an integrated uh, co-taught classroom. So I worked with, I was placed with one teacher um, who was the special education teacher and then her co-teacher was the uh, general education teacher. So I actually kind of got to work with two teachers, which was pretty cool. And um, I worked with kindergarten and I was so not sure what to expect going into it and just absolutely loved it. And so anyway, uh, in um, Waterloo, which was where I was placed for my um, gen ed placement uh, with first grade, we were hybrid. So uh, students were broken up into like cohorts essentially. So uh, teachers were there every day. So we would go in and we would have about six students. So half the class Monday, Tuesday, and then the rest of the class was online at the same time. So you would be teaching, you'd be facing your smart board, like making sure you're paying attention to your students online. And also like the six little ones sitting in front of you. And then Wednesdays, everybody was remote. Um, and then the second uh, placement, we were fully in person and I was in Geneva. 
And so, I don't know, having both of those full-time experiences really contributed to what I'm taking away uh, from student teaching because I got to teach hybrid. Um, I taught remotely fully on Wednesdays and then I went in person. So I kind of got the full circle, which was really cool. Um, but the, yeah, first um, semester is still student teaching and then you move into the spring semester, you're back as a student, you're a grad student and you have two education graduate courses. Um, one, you write a literature review and uh, the second class you do an applied project. Um, so a big project. And um, we actually have ours with Mary this year, which has been really great. Um, and then you have two spots left for electives. So um, any course essentially from the undergraduate um, course list that you can vouch for it being graduate level. Um, and uh, that's just a really great opportunity for you to either do an independent study or an internship and kind of customize where you want to go, or um, you can, you know, select a already, you know, a defined class. And, you know, if you never had taken a course in uh, architectural studies, maybe take one there, uh, maybe take another education course that you never had the chance to do. So uh, there's a lot of flexibility in those two courses. Um, but yeah, I guess that's the MAT program in a nutshell. I'm not trying to talk too much, but um, that's, uh, that is the MAT program. <laughs> yeah, and I'll just say that, that um, student teaching is a part of your certification. So if you don't end up doing the, the master's program, you'll get a chance to have that awesome experience um, during your undergraduate years. Um, so we'll, 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 we will ask a couple more questions and then we'll open up the floor. Um, so Mary, um, anecdotally or specifically, do you have examples of what students um, from the, the teacher education program are doing after graduation or um, even from the educational studies uh, major? Thanks, Gavin. Um, you know, certainly many go into teaching. It's it's a career that is never boring. <laughs> that is something new happening every day, and you get to work with young kids and and isn't uh, or 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 uh, adolescents and and isn't that exciting? Uh, um, so it's a field that I, I think certainly students who go through the teacher education program consider. But I also have seen students. Um, finish up the TEP and found that it has provided a foundation of skills that they apply to other fields. You know, and if you think about teaching, you think about, you know, the, um, the, the skills in organization and public speaking and managing your time and managing an environment, um, you know, a sense of responsibility and dependability, reliability. You're working at, with youth, so that keeps you on your toes. You're flexible, you, you have to be flexible, you have to make decisions. All of those kinds of skills that you really develop and hone in a teacher program and a teacher certification program are skills that you can take anywhere. And so our students certainly become teachers, but others become lawyers or uh, have gone into publishing, have gone into social work, have gone into youth advocacy work, uh, have gone into the health professions, occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech language, um, uh, autism specialist, uh, publishing, curriculum development. Uh, School counseling, that's a, you know, and, and school psychology, certainly that's an area because we have certainly at the elementary level where quite a few folks are interested in um, that uh, a lot of students end up kind of doing a major in psychology because they're interested in understanding how humans tick and how the brain works and then uh, you know, applying that to teaching. So I would say that students, you know, really often deploy in deploy what a strange often go into fields that are uh, centered around humans you know and i think that that um that makes sense right you're 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 drawn to a field like this because you're really interested in that interaction 
Uh, I would also say the students, we have so many Fulbright scholars at HWS. We're one of the largest producers of Fulbright scholars, and a lot of them were teachers in the teacher education program. We have students who go into the Peace Corps. We have students who work internationally all around the world, often in teaching programs, but also in nonprofit and, and advocacy work. And so um, uh, museum education, I'm just trying to think of some other areas. You know, it's certainly a feel, uh, I think it's wide open. Um, but I would say, you know, most end up going into teaching because it's a field that they really fell in love with, I think, while they were having that experience. And I bet that Larissa and Megan, you both have worked with kids um, in high school. Um, yeah, that's how I see you both nodding. And, and so that idea, no, sorry, being able to continue that and get that experience in college, I think is something that you can build on. And um, you kind of go behind the scenes in the teacher ed program more um, more so than um, I think in high school, uh, although sometimes students have a lot of experiences where they're also running programs and, and doing that kind of stuff. Um, the other place, Megan, you talked about early childhood education. And so we often have, right? Did I remember that early childhood? Maybe like a younger? It's, so, like, both. it's like, I could go younger. I could go up to like six, I think. That's okay. my max. <laughs> Okay, so um, so if sometimes students are interested in working with those younger grades, and we don't have that, like there's a certification birth through grades um, two, we don't have that certification, but it's an easy add on in addition to our elementary certification area. Uh, really New York State, if you already have your certification just requires two more classes and one more exam, um, teacher certification exam. So it's an easy add on and students often will work in, we have a number of preschool programs like Head Start. Uh, we have a place called Happiness House that is an inclusive preschool program. We have other universal K programs. We have a Montessori program in Geneva. So there are if students are interested in kind of a broader range of students to work with. Those, there are opportunities to do internships and, and other programs and study that too. Um, yeah, so I think I'll stop, stop there. Um, Alrighty, we have one more like formal question um, for you, Mary, but um, so before we take questions from all of you lovely people, um, so Another big draw for me to come to HWS was the study abroad program. And Gavin mentioned that he studied abroad and he taught abroad. Um, I studied abroad as well in Galway, Ireland in the spring of 2019. Um, so Gavin and I were, were abroad at the same time. And um, so I guess, can you talk about those kinds of opportunities that students might have um, or TEP or education students uh, if they wanna go abroad and teach? Sorry, <laughs> um, I was just thinking there for a second. Um, yes, I'm, I'm happy to comment on that. And the other thing I had wanted, why I paused for a second, I, I wanted to also loop back and ask Gavin and Sophie if to after this to talk about like next steps where you see yourselves going, because I talked about all of these careers and, and opportunities. So I'm curious if you've made some decisions um, or if you want to share any decisions that you're, you're making right now. But yes, yeah, so our program is designed flexibly so that you can go abroad if you'd like. And, you know, so many of our students do go abroad. Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity if that's something that you're interested in doing. And uh, there are a number of programs that also provide a teaching placement. Yeah. So I really recommend that if, it, if it's something that you're able to do. Uh, there is something about being in a school or doing volunteer work or service learning work or some kind of work that gets you connected with the, com the, with the country that you're living, with the people who live there, who are part of the community. And that makes a difference, uh, I think, to the level of connection that you feel when you're there when you're there in a country and so uh you know gavin with his experience teaching and i know in galway sophie have opportunities to work within communities as well i think um it, it, it helps i think build a connection i taught abroad in a number of different countries uh, in south korea in greece in spain uh for a number of years and and I felt so much more connected to a community because I was anchored in a school because I was living as part of a community. And so if you are able to do a study abroad program where you have a teaching placement, it's great. It can count towards your teacher ed requirement, your placement, uh, gets you a, a different model for education. Uh, and it, 
I don't know. It just builds that connection. I would also say uh, I'll do a shout out. Uh, the education department almost 20 years ago now started the New Zealand program, the Auckland program. We go every other year to Auckland, New Zealand, and it's there's two full days of teaching placements there. You're part of just a, an amazing uh, country and culture in New Zealand, and you learn so much about education. They were much earlier on than the U.S. Uh, were developed models for inclusive schools and really uh, the, the U.S. looked to the model in New Zealand uh, to, when they were um, designing inclusive education here in the U.S. And so if you're interested, uh, I know it's far away, but it's cer certainly a, a, a wonderful place to go. And one of the education professors goes with. And so I hate to say it, but it's been 10 years since I did that program. And it feels like yesterday t still, but I'm still in touch with those students. I mean, I was, you know, we stay in touch with a lot of our students, but in particular, when you go abroad with with students, there's a connection. And now, you know, they're 30 and having kids and doing different things in their lives. And it's just hard. That seems like a blink of an eye. But um, I, I don't know. Yeah. So, uh, Gavin, do you want to talk about your teaching placement in France and what that provided? Yeah, I'll briefly touch on it. And then um, I want to make sure we have time for any questions that you all have. Um, but I, I was able to teach at a, at a middle school. Um, it wasn't in my content area. I was teaching English um, to, to middle schoolers there. Um, and so I wasn't really building my, my history content knowledge. I um, learned a ton of classroom management strategies, especially for English language learners um, who we're dealing with a teacher whose French was fine um, to people who don't know French, but to them it was probably laughable. Um, so getting through that um, language barrier was was difficult at first, but like Mary said, um, the connection I felt to the country and, and to the school and to the students made the experience that much better. Um, and I'm sure there's a study abroad session that you can go to that people can talk more about that. Um, but what questions might you have about anything? And you can feel free to write it in the chat or if you just wanna hear us talk more, um, that's not ideal. We wanna hear from you. Okay, so um, Nancy's asking, can you do student teaching being an athlete and would you need a car? Um, so, uh, Mary, maybe you can touch on this as well. We do have many athletes in the program um, who work to balance their schedules. Um, being a mostly division three school, I know that coaches are, are really um, uh, sympathetic and, and helpful with balancing the schedules. Um, there are some, a limited number of cars that students can use that are through um, our, our campus safety office. I used one until senior year. Um, yeah, Mary, anything to... Um, yeah, I would say that our students are very active on campus. Many are athletes. Many are involved with other activities. I, I you know, our our students are able to do a lot. I'm not saying that it's, it doesn't require you to be organized, but I I certainly think that uh, being a, a a serious athlete lends itself to a teacher education program or a teacher a field in teaching because you've got to be organized and you've got to be strategic and be able to handle all of those things. So, and yes, um, the education department provides cars for students who need it. We also provide rides if students don't have a driver's license. And so there are ways to get out to your placements. We work with seven local school districts, some right here uh, in Geneva, but also within a 30 minute radius. And we find all those placements for you and provide ways for you to get there. So it looks like our next question. Um, students can also, oh, not a question. Students can also have a car all four years on campus. Correct. Yes, I will back that up. Yeah, you um, are able to bring your own car starting um, from your first year on campus, and you just get a, a permit from the campus safety office, and and you're all all set. I guess my question is for both of you. So because you were both pursuing your master's right now and you've taught in G or Geneva or upstate New York this entire time, are you planning on getting a job in upstate New York or are you planning on transferring somewhere else? I personally am uh, 
intending to stay in upstate New York because I've grown to love it up here and call Geneva my home and the Finger Lakes region. Um, and I have really loved working in the local schools. Um, I am in the process of waiting for public schools to post uh, positions around here. So um, yeah, I'm kind of just in that lull right now waiting for uh, districts to say that they need elementary school or special ed teachers. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I think just having, for me, um, there was definitely, there's part of me that's like, oh, I could go home because I, I'm, you know, familiar with the area. Um, I could probably save some money um, because personally, my parents have offered, they were like, you can come live at home. And that was, um, I guess, a challenging decision for me. But in the long run, I think I'm going to be really happy here because I have been the last five, four and a half, four and three quarters <laughs> uh, years. And so working in the local schools up here has given me a really good taste of the area and different populations. And uh, just, it's a really uh, diverse and an interesting group of people and students up here. And I love that. And every day is really different. And so um, that was a huge draw for me. And I feel like through student teaching, I've definitely built a lot of teacher connections with people in the area. And you do that also through uh, teaching placements, you kind of network, you, you build your connections in all these different areas. And um, so that's, I guess, my perspective of just staying up here. It's been, um, I think it was a decision that kind of came naturally to me. Of course, you don't have to, but yeah. Yeah, I will say to Sophie's point that um, New York has a pretty uh, rigorous certification process. So if you don't Think you want to stay in New York uh, to teach? Um, it's uh, we have a person in the department that can help you with that transfer. But a lot of states um, have reciprocity with New York State. So if you decide you want to teach in Massachusetts or whatever, you can do that. Um, I am from about an hour from campus, so I kind of knew that from the beginning. I, I felt that this was my time um, to get out. Uh, I love this area. Um, I love the Finger Lakes. It's been a great place to spend five years of my life, um, but I'm excited to um, explore other parts of the country. Um, so, uh, and I, uh, through a summer program I participated in um, and worked at, I've been really attracted to, to boarding school education. Um, and so I, I recently accepted a job at a school in Pennsylvania called Perky Omen School, um, which I'm very excited about. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I um, am taking a bit of a different route. We have a lot of, of teachers that certainly go the public school route and are really prepared for that. But um, the program is not just preparing you to, to go into public schools um, or that specific model, if that's not um, what you're thinking of, of pursuing. The only other thing I would add, we have a lot of students who also want to teach in larger cities. And, and I, I think that uh, the the education and the training here prepares you for that. Uh, and we also have, uh, uh, we have been doing some more collaborations within New York City in terms of building a network and a connection with uh, city schools. And so uh, we have quite a few alum who teach in New York City, for example, and in other regions where larger cities. And so we have been working on developing that connection as well. Uh, for our students so that they have opportunities and, and connections there as well. Uh, so yeah, and I'm glad, Gavin, I'm glad that you mentioned reciprocity. So that idea that you can, you know, take your, your teaching credential on the road. Uh, you don't have to just stay in New York State, which, uh, you know, it's, yeah, gives you options. Um, so I, I want to be respectful of our time. Mm -hmm. um, and I will ask that Mary and Sophie put their emails in the chat just so we're made available in case you guys have questions after this or next year or whatever. We're happy to connect um, with you as you navigate the next month of figuring out where you're going to college. Um, and certainly if you end up here, we're happy to help as you transition into HWS and maybe the teacher ed program. Um, that's all I have. Certainly, if you have specific admissions questions, your counselor is um, a resource for you there. Um, but please don't hesitate to reach out. We're happy to connect. And this is certainly not an ideal way to be going through this process. So thanks for coming on. And, and seriously, don't hesitate. We're teachers. We love to talk to 
to uh, to students, especially me, secondary. I'm so excited to help students with their college process someday. Larissa, Megan, and uh, and Nancy, on behalf of your daughter, thanks for joining us. It really uh, was uh, wonderful to meet you. Um, and yeah, please do reach out if you have any follow-up questions. I'd be happy to talk with you to get on Zoom again. I, I actually talk with quite a few high school students who are interested in talking more about teaching. So anytime. Thank you.